Hello, today we will begin to explain some details in our course. First of all, welding performance qualification. This is the welder test according to ASME section 9. So we have the WPQ or welding performance qualification. This is going to be the title of the welder certificate according to the ASME code. While according to the ISO code, it's called welder qualification test. So WQT is the name of the certificate according to the ISO code. And that name, it's not a standard name. However, it's widely used to refer to the welder test according to the ISO code. We will talk about something called welding variables. And when we say welding variables right now, we mean by it the welders. As we agreed before that we have some welding variables, like the ones in the WPS and the PQR, we have some essential variables that if we tend to change it, it's going to need requalification. But in our session for today, we will talk about welding variables for welders. We will also talk about the type of the test required, so if we are testing a welder, we will know how to test the joint, either by using NDT or by using destructive tests. We will also talk about combination of welding process, so if our welder needs to uh, use two process to weld the joint, for example, get out and smell process, we will need to know what are the conditions to perform such a joint. We will also know how to retest the welder and when to retest the welder if he failed and what are the conditions to retest him and also we will need when we need to renew the qualification of our welder and when to tell that the certificate of our welder is expired. First of all, let's talk about the welder variables to test the welder according to ASME section 9. We have some variables. To some of those variables, we have joint variables. We have base metal variables, we have filler metal variables, position variables, and we have other variables such as electric variables in the uh, Gmau and Gitau process and also we have gas variables in the oxy fuel welding, gas tungsten arc welding, gas metal arc welding and plasma arc welding. From this, we have realized that not all welding processes have the same variables. For example, the base metal variables is for oxy fuel welding, shielded metal arc welding, submerged arc welding, gas metal arc wel welding, gas tungsten arc welding, and plasma arc welding, welding. While the joint variable is for oxy fuel welding, shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding. Uh, gas tungsten arc welding and plasma arc welding. So we need to check the essential variables for each welding process. Let's go back to uh, the ISO code. According to the ISO code, we have variables for welding process, product type, whether I'm welding a plate or a pipe, type of weld, whether I'm welding put or fillet weld, filler metal, which means the group or the type of the filler metal, dimension, and this is going to mean the material thickness for a plate or the outside diameter for a pipe, welding process, I'm sorry, welding position, and finally, we have other variables, which is the welding details. For example, material packing, gas packing, single layer or multi-layer welding, leftward welding or rightward welding. Basically, both ISO and ASME codes have the same essential variables from different points of view. In our next session, we will talk about welding variables for manual and semi-automatic welding process in details according to ASME section 9. See you soon!